Hello everybody, good afternoon. Hope you guys are doing well today. And in this video, I wanna explore something that I didn't think I was gonna have to explore this year. And we're gonna talk about something that I can't believe that we're talking about because you guys know how I usually am about these things. You guys know that when it comes to modern NFL football, particularly offensive football, I like to embrace the modern era. I like to embrace the trends of modern football. I like to look at what the top offenses are doing and say, hey, let's do that. But in this video, I kind of want to approach things from the opposite angle because I think there might be something going on here that indicates we need to slow it up a little bit. So there are a couple different angles to this, but um, basically me and Brandon of the Hawk's Nest had a stream last night and we briefly touched on this topic and then... This morning, Arjan Menon on X posted this chart, and it almost it's, it's almost like this chart is in direct reply to the things that me and the Hawks Nest were talking about um, at some length last night. So I got to kind of make a follow-up video here to talk about this. Are the Seahawks trying to be a little too complex on offense? Do the Seahawks need to simplify their offensive game plan a little bit? Do they need to simplify their play calling a little bit? And do they need to embrace kind of doing the opposite of what is the convention of what is conventionally considered to be good in the modern NFL? And what I'm talking about is running the ball versus passing the ball. Because what this chart does is it plots how often teams run the ball on first and ten versus how successful they are on those first and 10 runs. And conventional wisdom is that you don't really want to run the ball that much on first and 10. You, you, of course you do it sometimes, but you don't want to do it that much because the analytics, even going back to like the 90s and early 00s, analytics told us that you want to throw the ball most of the time on first and 10 because it was just a better expected value play. But I'm looking at this chart, and I'm thinking about the Seahawks. I'm thinking about the players they have. I'm thinking about the results in recent weeks. And I'm wondering if maybe we need to look at going in the other direction because there's a little bit of an edge case developing here. What I mean by that is if you are extraordinarily good at doing something that is typically considered to be bad, you can do it and get away with it because you're so good at it. It's like Dirk Nowitzki taking long two-point jumpers. He was so good at it, he could overcome it. Most players in the NBA couldn't take those long two-point jumpers and remain efficient because it was such an inefficient shot. But guys like Dirk Nowitzki, uh, there were guys like Kobe Bryant, they were so good at it, they could still do it and remain efficient. So let's uh, take a look at this chart right here and try to drill down to the meaningful part of it. So rush rate, this is how often teams run the ball on first and 10. The uh, commanders are in last place back here, sub 35% with the Bills. You've got the Eagles and Bengals, uh, sub 40%. And then you've got the Patriots. So those are your bottom five teams in terms of how often they run the ball on first and 10. The Seahawks are sixth, just above 40%. So... If you were to rank the teams least often running the ball on first and 10, the Seahawks, right near the back, of the back of the line. And yet, in terms of success rate, they are one of the three best teams at it. Now, of course, there are diminishing returns. If we did it more, it would be less effective because it would be more predictable. But look at how far ahead these three teams are of everyone else when it comes to success rate. There are three teams that have a success rate of first and 10 runs above 50%. The Niners, number one, and then you have the Dolphins and the Seahawks at about 51%. And then there's a big drop off to number four, which is Buffalo, and they basically never do it. So again, diminishing returns, you don't want to say, oh, we should do it all the time because obviously this success rate will maintain if that's all we do. That's not how it works. But is it possible that the Seahawks need to look at this and go, we are having so much success running the ball on first and 10 that we need to actually do it more than the average team. 
Because normally I would look at this and be really happy. I would say, wow, look at this. We are on the cutting edge. We are barely running the ball on first and 10 compared to the average team. We are right there with the um, offenses that I want to be. You have a team like the, uh, the, the Eagles. You have a team like the Bills. You have offenses like the Chiefs. I want to usually say I want to do what those teams are doing because those are the teams that are generally on the razor's edge of correct offensive play calling. But... Then again, you've got the Niners and Dolphins up here. I mean, those are the two of the top offenses so far this year, right? And they're having this incredibly high success rate, and the Niners do it at an almost average level. The Dolphins do it at a well above average level. Maybe we need to start looking at this through a slightly different lens. And could this just be driven by the fact that there is so much going on on this Seahawks offense that we've kind of lost track of making sure we do the things that work. You look at this Seahawks offense, there's a lot going on. And maybe this is one of those instances where you can genuinely say there is too much going on with this Seahawks offense. And usually that's kind of a meme. You say that and it's kind of a joke. It's like going into a job interview and saying, oh, well, my my biggest flaw is I'm too good at this job. But... We've got three receivers that demand high usage. Metcalf, Lockett, JSN. Those are three guys that if you ask um, a a bunch of Seahawks fans, a majority of them will say we are a better team when we get those guys the ball a lot. We also have three tight ends that demand high usage. You've got Parkinson, you've got Disley, and you've got Fant. And honestly, in a lot of recent games, we haven't been able to use those guys that much. But those are three guys that you'd want to get on the field because they are successful players when they get on. Um, Those receivers, two of them are very highly paid. And the one that isn't highly paid was a recent first round pick with a ton of hype. You look at the tight ends, two of the tight ends are highly paid. They're counting a lot of money against the cap. And then you've got Parkinson, who's in a contract year and has honestly been playing really well when he's gotten opportunities. So... You're trying to balance all these different things. Have we kind of lost sight of the fact that this team has done what a lot of teams don't do and spend back-to-back second-round picks on running backs? Walker and Charbonnet. Most teams would not do that. Most teams that are thinking along these modern lines of you don't want to run the ball that much, you want to be a pass-happy team, most of them don't spend really high picks on running backs. And we have. So maybe there's just a little too much focus on trying to get these receivers the ball. I'm at least open to the possibility. Maybe there's just no way to really say we're going to get Metcalf the ball a bunch. We're going to get Lockett the ball a bunch. We're going to get JSN his touches. We're going to get all our tight ends these touches. And we're going to take care of our running backs. That would require us to keep the offense on the field for 70 plus plays a game. And right now they're not doing that. Most games, you won't, but honestly, the Seahawks offense isn't even doing a better than average job of staying on the field. So, is it possible there's too much of a good thing on the Seahawks offense, and it's left the play calling a little bit confused on how to make all this work? And do we need to just pull things back a little bit, simplify, and go to a more, um, and and go to a more run-happy approach? Geno Smith That would limit his turnovers. That's the thing that people are getting concerned about, right? Geno Smith, he is playing well overall, but he's turning the ball over too much. This would help limit that. So, yeah, I kind of can't believe I'm saying this, but do the Seahawks need to run the ball more? Do they need to forget about trying to get JSN involved, forget about trying to get all these tight ends involved, forget about trying to go to these three receiver sets? Because hand-in-hand with this would be two tight end and three tight end sets. Because when you get two tight ends and three tight ends on the field, you can't get three receivers on the field. And don't forget, by the way, we've got Jake Bobo playing really well for us. He's a great blocker, and he's doing stuff as a receiver. You've also got to factor him in as well, not only as another mouth to feed, but also as a guy who is at his best when he's on the field when we run the ball. So maybe just having all these elements at play on this offense have kind of, in a weird way, forced us to get away from what works best. When the Seahawks have two tight ends on the field, 
they are incredibly efficient and effective on offense. Uh, we haven't seen that level of efficient uh, efficientness and effectiveness when we have three receivers on the field. Obviously, that's the direction we want to go. That's why we drafted JSN. That's why we paid Metcalf. That's why we paid Lockett. We want to be a three-receiver team, like the Rams are typically. That's why you know Shane Waldron comes from that tree. He wants to do the things that Sean McVay does, and Sean McVay loves his three-receiver sets. Last year, we got away from it because we had only two really good receivers consistently. We didn't really have a true slot receiver, and we had the three good tight ends. This year, we get JSN, but maybe there just needs to be an understanding that our goal is to be efficient and effective. And we are at our most efficient and effective with JSN only seeing a limited number of snaps with us heavily using tight ends and with us running the ball. The Seahawks don't have the best rushing attack in the league this year, don't get me wrong, but it seems like they have one of the most effective ones, one of the most efficient ones, and maybe they need to exploit that a little bit more until such a time as the three receiver sets actually catch up in effectiveness. What do you guys think? I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Uh, more videos coming later today. Just something I wanted to talk about after the stream last night. And then this chart showed up and I was like, okay, I got to talk about this one.